Welcome to Providence, Rhode Island. In this video, we'll take you with us on a three-day adventure to this charming New England city. We'll tell you all about the must-visit attractions and things to do, and of course, where to eat. Let's jump right in. Since we have a very busy day of sightseeing, our first stop of the day is to get some fuel. On a cute little street in the heart of downtown Providence, the Small Point Cafe. When I visit a new place, I really like going to local independent shops to get a good feel for the place I'm visiting. Small Point Cafe is a cool coffee shop that combines good food with good vibe and friendly service. They also have an extensive selection of delicious looking pastries, drinks, and sandwiches that you can choose from. We decided to go for the Lox Bagel and an iced latte. The bagel was nice and chewy and they really did not skimp on the ingredients. Overall, it was a pretty solid breakfast. The old brick wall with plants and memorabilia in every spot create a bright and fun ambiance and we would definitely recommend stopping by here on your visit to Providence. Providence has a lot of really beautiful street art and many murals, so I would definitely recommend taking the time to stroll through the streets. The Avenue concept, which is linked in the description below, will tell you all about the different art around Providence and where to find it. You can also stop by the Providence Arcade, which is one of the oldest shopping malls in the US. It was built in 1828 and it was originally a bustling marketplace, and up until today it has retained its historic charm. Providence is overall fairly small and very walkable. The Green Line, also known as the Independence Trail, is marked on the ground and will take you to all the important sites in Providence. Our first destination, the Rhode Island State House, is the seat of the state's government and a notable architectural and historical landmark. It was built in 1904 and the building's design was influenced by the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. Rhode Island was one of the most progressive colonies where religious freedom and protections for individual rights were highly valued and were foundational influences of the U.S. Constitution. The architecture here reflects the styles of ancient Greece and Rome, appropriate models for a building dedicated to the values of democracy. The grand and beautiful interior is adorned with white Georgian marble. If you've been to Boston's public library, the style here may look very familiar, and that's because this building was designed with the same prestigious architectural firm that designed the Boston Public Library. And even the bathrooms here are all marble. We took a guided tour of the State House, which I would highly recommend you do. It is completely free and takes about one hour. They offer these tours on weekdays and you can sign up on the website, which is linked in the description below. You can also do a self-guided audio tour. The State House is also home to the chambers for both the Rhode Island Senate and House of Representatives. Both chambers are important spaces where lawmakers debate, discuss, and vote on proposed legislation. You can also visit the Governor's Office, which is one of the fancier rooms in the State House. Here you will find a portrait of George Washington painted by Gilbert Stewart a Rhode Islander and leading American portrait painter from the late 18th century. The portrait of George Washington on the $1 bill is based on Gilbert Stuart's paintings. Within the State House, you'll also find a small museum known as the Charter Museum. It houses the Royal Charter of 1663, granted to Rhode Island by King Charles II of England. It provided Rhode Island settlers self-determination and religious freedom. Finally, one of the most notable features of the State House is the gold-covered statue on top of the dome, known as the Independent Man. It symbolizes freedom and independence and represents the spirit of individualism. Now we'll make our way to Water Place Park, a scenic waterfront park in the heart of downtown Providence. Here you'll find a beautiful and scenic walkway that wraps around the river and provides very nice views of the city. 
On one side of the river is downtown Providence, and across the river is the area of College Hill, which houses Brown University, the Rhode Island School of Design, and the RISD Museum, which we will visit later on in the video. The park also hosts a very popular event in the fall called Water Fire, where bonfires are lit on the river. Providence has a very rich history as it is one of the oldest cities in New England. Throughout the walkway, you will find many memorials to commemorate various historical events. Rhode Island was founded in 1636 by Roger Williams, a Reformed Baptist and religious exile from the colony of Massachusetts. You'll see signs of him all throughout the city. During the American Revolution, Rhode Island played a significant role. It was the first colony to declare independence from Britain and its residents actively participated in the war efforts. After all this walking, it's time for our well-earned lunch. For lunch, we stopped by Mokbun, a local Korean restaurant in the heart of downtown Providence. The ambiance here is very cute, casual, and comfortable. They serve traditional Korean homestyle meals, which are usually centered around a bowl of rice, a small bowl of soup, and a variety of little side dishes called banchan, of different textures and flavors, all complementing the main dish as a set. We got the tofu bibimbap and the pork katsu. I really like that they serve banchan as it adds nice variety to the meal. The banchan wasn't super traditional, for instance, the potato with the ketchup, but still, it was pretty good. Definitely an interesting modern twist on these dishes. I really like the bibimbap, especially because it is served in a sizzling hot stone bowl, which makes the rice at the bottom nice and crispy. We also really liked the pork katsu as it was also super crispy. I would definitely recommend this restaurant and we'll link its location in the description below. Before we go to check in at our hotel, we decided to check out Providence City Hall in the Providence Public Library both of which are historical and beautiful buildings full of charm. Now we'll head on over to the hotel. The Providence Biltmore Hotel, now known as the Graduate Providence, is located in the heart of downtown Providence and was built in 1922 by the architectural firm responsible for New York City's Grand Central Terminal. The Biltmore Hotel was constructed during the Roaring Twenties, a period of economic prosperity and cultural vibrancy. The hotel features a distinctive architectural style characterized by classical details, symmetry, and grandeur. The Biltmore is an elegant and imposing structure that has stood as a landmark in downtown Providence for nearly a century. Throughout its history, the Biltmore Hotel has been a focal point for social events, business meetings, and cultural gatherings. It has hosted numerous notable guests and events, contributing to its reputation. In 1979, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places in recognition of its architectural and historical significance. Overall, the rooms here were quite clean and spacious, and the stay was very comfortable. The location is also very central, and I would recommend staying here when you visit Providence. The hotel also has a parking garage next door, which is an additional fee of about $30 per day. Right next to the hotel is the Providence Place Mall. The mall features some major retail chains and department stores. Nothing really too special though. If you come in the summer, it's a nice place to cool down in the AC.
One cool thing about this mall is that it has a very interesting view as it sits on top of train tracks and the river. Another popular spot to check out in Providence is the Federal Hill neighborhood. Federal Hill has a strong Italian influence and is often referred to as Providence's Little Italy. The neighborhood's roots in the Italian-American community date back to the late 19th and early 20th centuries when Italian immigrants settled in the area. Their influence is still evident in the local culture, businesses, and events. At the heart of Federal Hill is De Pasquale Square, a central plaza surrounded by restaurants, cafes, and shops. While on Federal Hill, we stumbled upon an Italian grocery store and decided to get a cheesecake and it was honestly one of the best cakes I've ever had. For dinner, we stopped by Ogie's Trailer Park. Ogie's has a retro trailer park theme, creating a unique and nostalgic atmosphere. The interior is designed to resemble a vintage trailer park complete with eclectic decorations, neon lights, and kitschy elements. The ambiance is casual and laid back, making it a fun and inviting place to grab some comfort food and classic American dishes. One notable feature of Ogie's is its outdoor space. The bar has a spacious patio area with picnic tables, string lights, and a casual setup. We went for the truffle tater tots and the party wings with barbecue sauce. Both were great, the tots had good crunch, the truffle was good, and they go amazing with ketchup. We also got the mac and cheese croquettes, which were perfectly fried and super delicious. I highly recommend stopping by here on your visit to Providence. On day two of our trip, we decided to start off the day at a popular local spot, none other than Dave's Coffee. One distinctive aspect of Rhode Island's coffee culture is coffee milk. Coffee milk is the state's official drink and it is a sweetened coffee syrup mixed with milk. I think the term coffee for this drink is a bit misleading. It's more like a caramel drink that is slightly coffee flavored. It kind of reminds me of the Starbucks caramel drinks. At first I didn't think I would like it since I heard mixed reviews, but it was actually quite good. It's sweet, creamy, and caramelly. Nothing not to like. If you're in Rhode Island, you have to try this local staple. Next, we will go to one of the best art museums in the area, the RISD Museum. The RISD Museum, formerly known as the Rhode Island School of Design Museum, is an art museum located in Providence, Rhode Island. It is affiliated with the Rhode Island School of Design, one of the leading art and design schools in the U.S. The museum has a rich history dating back to its founding in 1877. It was established alongside the Rhode Island School of Design to provide students with direct access to original works of art for study and inspiration. The museum's collections encompass a wide range of art and artifacts, including paintings, sculptures, decorative arts, textiles, prints, drawings, and much more. The diverse collection spans from ancient civilization to contemporary art. I personally love this contrast and I think it's what makes this museum so special. Some notable highlights in the museum's collection include works by renowned artists such as Monet, Degas, and Picasso, as well as objects from ancient Egyptian, Greek, and Roman civilizations. The museum also features impressive examples of Asian art, European decorative arts, and American paintings. The museum has free entries on Sundays, and I would recommend spending at least two hours here. And if you find this video helpful so far, please like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel.
One of the most famous pieces in the museum is the 12th century wooden Buddha, the largest historic Japanese wooden sculpture in the U.S., standing over 9 feet tall. The Buddha is quite impressive and is on permanent display in its own gallery in the museum. I would also recommend stopping by the RISD store if you want to pick up some souvenirs. I decided to get these super cute geometric coasters. Overall, the RISD Museum is a must visit when you come to Providence. After we were done with the RISD Museum, we decided to explore the surrounding area, which has a few historical landmarks. When you're here, you should check out the First Baptist Church in America. It was founded by Roger Williams in 1638 and this church is the oldest Baptist church in the U.S. The current building dates back to 1775. Another historical landmark is Stephen Hopkins House. The house was built in 1707 and is one of the oldest surviving houses in Rhode Island. It is an excellent example of colonial era architecture and it is named after Stephen Hopkins, a prominent figure in Rhode Island history who played a significant role in the American Revolution. Finally, the Providence Athenaeum is a famous library founded in 1836, but unfortunately, it was closed during our visit. For lunch, we stopped by Tallulah's Tequeria, a popular local favorite taco spot. It's an order outside, pick up your food, and eat outside type of place. We got a few different tacos, and they came on a corn tortilla and loaded with guacamole, onions, cilantro, salsa, and pickled radish. For me, the fish taco was at the top, we heard so many positive things about this place, which was overall really good, but my one complaint is that the tortilla was slightly too thick. Each taco is about 550 and overall it's a solid spot for lunch. Right next door is a bakery called Silver Star Bakery, which serves traditional Portuguese baked goods, so we decided to pop in for some dessert. We decided to order the egg tarts or pastel donatas that they are famous for. It was pretty good, the egg custard was sweet and fluffy, and the crust was buttery and flaky. We also got a traditional Portuguese bean tart, which I thought was just okay, and we also got a flan, which was by far my favorite. The sweet syrup was super addicting. I think this is a great spot to stop by for some sweet treats on your trip to Providence. Of course, no visit to Providence is complete without stopping by the prestigious Ivy League institution, Brown University. Located in the College Hill neighborhood, Brown has a picturesque campus with historic buildings and lots of green spaces. Brown was founded in 1764 and is the seventh oldest institution of higher education in the U.S. We came in the summertime, so it wasn't too, too busy, but there were still plenty of people around taking campus tours. The campus is absolutely beautiful and a great place to leisurely walk around and enjoy the atmosphere. The nearby Thayer Street is a vibrant commercial street with lots of restaurants and dining options and it is located adjacent to Brown's campus. We decided to stop by for a quick refreshing drink after walking around in the summer heat. Our next stop is Prospect Terrace, one of my personal favorite attractions to visit in Providence. Prospect Terrace is a scenic park close to Brown and provides stunning panoramic views of downtown Providence. If you choose to come here, I would definitely recommend driving up here and not walking as it is on a pretty steep hill. To start off our third and final day in Providence, we stopped by Cafe Chocolate for breakfast. 
It's a nice cafe in Providence near Brown and RISD with delicious food. It has a cheery and comfortable Swedish style decor and friendly staff with a welcoming atmosphere. We enjoyed our tasty sandwiches and drinks and at reasonable prices. I would highly recommend getting the pecan sticky bun as it was super tasty. I also got a smoked salmon bagel and I really loved it. They have a special seed bagel and it was really good. Great artwork for sale on the walls and delicious pastries to start off your day. If you come to Providence, this cafe can't be beat for its friendly atmosphere and tasty food. Roger Williams Park is a large public park located about 5 miles or 8 kilometers from the downtown Providence area. It is one of the oldest and most expansive public parks in the country. It spans over 400 acres and includes a diverse array of landscapes including woodlands, lakes, ponds, and open fields. The park also has several gardens and my favorite being the Japanese garden, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's a really nice and serene place to come for a walk and breathe in some fresh air. Here you will also find the Museum of Natural History and a planetarium. The museum has exhibits that showcase the natural history of Rhode Island and New England, as well as broader global topics. Exhibits cover ecosystems, wildlife, and geological formations. The museum is fairly small and you will probably only need about an hour or two here. The entry fee is only $2 and well worth it. They also have a scavenger hunt, which was a lot of fun. We really enjoyed this museum and would highly recommend stopping by on your visit to Providence. This concludes our Providence adventure. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more travel content. See you in the next video!